ladies and dudes, and welcome back for my two-part event of my top 10 most strongest or the weakest points that I ever found from my movie reviews, number 25 through 48. And let's head on to the good old positive notes of my top 10 most strongest points ever from my movie reviews, number 25 through 48. Let's get on to the positive notes on this list. Hooray! Yes, yes, yes. Whee! I'm sorry if I got too wild and all that stuff. So let's begin. Coming at number 10 has to go to the near ending from Nine Museum 3, Secret of the Tomb. I will say for this near ending, it's definitely one of the best parts about this movie. It's very sad, bittersweet, and this will be the last and final time for Larry Daly to do his job as a night guard. And yes, ladies and dudes, for this sad moment right here, this is Robin Williams' last and final movie that he'll ever be featured. We love you, dude, and we will miss you. Amen. Coming at number nine is definitely a tie. The two movie review, the two movies that I don't have in my collection, is Howl's Moving Castle and the Seventeenth Pokemon movie. And for their tiebreaker, tiebreaker is definitely the animation. I freaking love their animation. It is pretty well done. It's very rich, very well detailed. And definitely one of the most brightest animations I have ever seen so far in anime history. So I can't tell which one of these two greatest movies that has the best animation ever in animation movie history. So they deserve a tie at the number nine spot. Coming at number eight, another movie that I don't have in my collection is The Incredibles, and for The Incredibles is their memorable characters. I love every single one of the characters that came from one of the best Pixar movies of all time. I will go with the three best memorable characters I have ever seen in this Pixar movie. One is Dash, that cute little blonde haired kid who knows how to run fast and never get tired. We got Frozone who can freeze things here and there and he had one of the best dialogues I have ever heard in this movie where he said, Honey, where's my super suit? <laughs> I love that scene. And also E, one of the best memorable characters in the whole entire movie where she said a couple of funny dialogues here and there. She's wild and crazy. She's a freaking scientist and she knows how to create superhero uh, suits very, very well. I give her points for that. So yeah, um, the memorable characters from The Incredibles deserves to be at number eight. Um, coming at number seven goes to the semi from A Walk Among the Tombstones. Out of all the Liam Neeson films that I've seen here and there, I will say for a walk among the tombstones, it has one of the best semitographies I have ever seen. And it's staying very faithful to the old movies that we all know and love back in the 90s. I do praise this movie for staying faithful to the original semitography of the 90s. That's a big giant plus in my book. So it deserves to be at number seven. Let's see what I got in my... Oh yeah, coming at number six is a three-way tie of the House of Flying Daggers. The problem is I can't tell which one of these best points that I really want to put in this list. Will it be the fantastic martial arts style for all the action scenes here and there? Will it be that beautiful epic score that I ever heard in my life that has a perfect Chinese Asian feel to it? Or my most favorite part of the movie is where Gene and May had sex in the grass. I mean, I fell 
fell in love with all three of the best, strongest points for the House of Flying Daggers. And I can't tell which one is the all-time best. So, it's, it deserves to be a tie at number six. And let's see, uh, oh, here we go. Coming at number five has to go to that sad song that came from Taken 3. I really love this sad song to death. If I remember right, it's called Starter or whatever it's called. From some unknown artist that I don't know of. But I freaking love this song to death. It's very emotional. It's very darn sad. It's very beautiful. But yet so pure at the same time. And that is that song that's all about where Brian Mills got really heartbroken about what happened to his precious Lenny. His precious Lenny got killed by a mysterious murderer. And yeah, he told Kim the bad news about it too. And that song will always have a special place in my heart. So yeah, that sad song deserves to be at number five. Let's see, what else? Coming at number four is another movie that I don't have in my collection. Is the, the you know, the second Moroni Kenshin movie called Moroni Kenshin, The Kyoto Infirm. And the, one of the best, strongest points I want to add in this list is definitely the main add-ins for some of the scenes that we haven't seen from the anime to the manga. I am so darn happy to see all these fantastic things that we had never seen from the manga and the anime. I will say the best main add-in from the second Moroni Kenshin movie is definitely the main beginning of the story. I will say the main beginning of the story really did blew me away. We did see a part where Hajime Saito met Lord Shishio first. That was awesome. We see Kenshin, Ms. Karu, Yahiko, and Sonosuke, you know, become a family and went to that, uh, that theater place. And we finally get to see Ms. Karu finally got some students in her Kamin Kashin style school. I'm very darn happy for what they added for the second Moroni Kenshin movie. I praise that movie all the way through. So yeah, it deserves to be at number four. And finally, my last top three best strongest points ever in movie history. Coming at number three goes to the main climax story of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. I freaking love the main climax of this movie where Harry Potter, Hermione, Ron, the teachers, the students, and the couple of the members of the Weasley family are heading off to their most biggest battle of their lives to stop Lord Voldemort and those couple of Death Eaters, witches, whoever these people are. They're going to do the best they can to go on to their most epic battle of their lives to save Hogwarts before it's too late. This movie really did blew me away. And coming at number two goes to the two main scores from Princess Mononoke. And I can't tell which one of these two best scores is the all-time best. Uh, it deserves to be a tie. Will it be the legend of Hashitaka or will it be Journey to the West? Where the story is all about Hashitaka's journey where he needs to find a way to save himself from that evil curse that he got in his hand from that from that big giant warhog, if you know what I mean. So yeah, the two epic scores deserves to be at number two. And finally, the number one best, strongest point I have ever seen in movie history so far from movie review number 25 to all the way to 48 goes to the main song called When You Believe from the Prince of Egypt. I freaking love this song to death. It is one of the best memorable songs of all time. And I can't tell which one is the all-time best. The one that came from in this movie 
or the one that came from Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston. I just love both. The song is all about you need to believe in yourself. You need to believe about miracles and freedom and making up your own choices and all the good positive sides that you need to know in Christian faith. So yes, this main song, When You Believe, from the Prince of Egypt, deserves to be the number one best strongest point ever in movie history. And there you go, ladies and dudes. Those are my top 10 best strongest points ever from my movie reviews that I did so far in number 25 all the way to 48. And tell me, ladies and dudes, what is your most favorite strongest point that you've ever seen from your favorite movies? Or one of the most biggest, weakest points that you ever seen from your favorite movies? Well, whichever it is, leave a comment there. Let me know and join me next time on Memorial Day as I do my next movie review of Alice Through the Looking Glass. And Sally, this will be my last, my well, my very first and last time to see one of the most underrated actors of all time, Alan Rickman, in his last and final film. This is going to be sad, so be prepared for my next videos to come. I'll see you all later. Sayonara.